so we will explore it further so what is this self exploration in brief he said that to get into dialogue within oneself and to verify the proposals so one essential part of the self exploration is to be aware of the proposal to listen to the proposal okay so there are two things one thing is hearing another is listening what is desirable hearing or listening listening so the words that i am using are the same from the same language okay but if the words are only falling on ears and we are not able to get to the meaning of it then we are just hearing what is essentially required is to listen to the proposal this is first part second thing is to verify now when you go to verify you ask very genuine questions to yourself right so for example do i want to be happy or unhappy i can verify do i naturally accept the flow of relationship or opposition i can verify what is naturally acceptable to have food for health or to have food for taste what is naturally acceptable health what is healthy taste in fact these are questions where you get caught up you know and then i have to understand what health is why do you have the option like this why don't you think generally that how can you make so there could be something you are tasting too see that's the way to be in development or the development point sir right because it is this or that is the thing that we should have all the taste in fact gradually when you become aware of health you will start getting taste sir, uh, only uh, those uh, things which are healthy uh, up to 15 cm test beyond that health <laughs> <laughs> because your tongue length that requires taste definitely and then whatever goes after beyond that when it is for health only <laughs> in fact it is said that you get the taste only out of the front portion of the tongue that could be only 1 inch maybe and for how much time do you retain the food on that part of the tongue but there so much pressure <laughs> <laughs> don't okay and many times we spoil health for taste just yesterday there was a news that in bihar you know so many people consume liquor and you know died why did they consume liquor for taste for example isn't it and so much of uh, things are happening why is the wrong taste not the quality taste we need all the taste yeah so in fact if you look at it when i understand health through self verification i am able to get the taste out of healthy food so i have to verify for myself i have to verify for myself hai na what is naturally acceptable and then i have to live accordingly so whether i am only working at the level of thought analyzing things or i am actually verifying to find it out i have to live accordingly when i go to live accordingly i behave with human beings for example one may say that yes what is naturally acceptable to me is feeling of relationship and i can agree to that yes hai na and i can also assume that i have understood relationship but when i have to behave with the other with my spouse with my child and i am getting irritated i am getting angry i am getting opposed that gives me a reflection that i have not understood so the test of my understanding is living so on one hand i am verifying and then i am also living accordingly and validating similarly with the rest of nature i validate so if i am able to get the proposal rightly i verify within myself validate in my living then becomes a part of my understanding is it logical to think in the case of I developed a taste for healthy. Yes. It's a good proposal, right? You can think about the proposal like that. I developed a taste for relax, and it's a healthy food. I developed a taste for it, and I like it and enjoy it. So it's healthy as well as I'm happy. In fact, why to develop? You can say that I get taste out of healthy food only. Yeah, correct. Exactly. Yes. Why to develop it? Proposal. Yeah. No, no, no. Because, because you have been eating junk so far, you have developed a taste. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
Find out which process is naturally acceptable to you. A process of self-exploration, self-verification on your own right, leading to understanding in yourself, or a process of do's and don'ts in which you assume what is said without verification. So these do's and don'ts don't help, isn't it? And even if I am giving some moral story here, then also it will not help. Ultimately, I have to verify for myself whether, whether it applies to me in this part of my life, in this situation, in this scenario. So if I am able to you know, give, enable this process in the child through education, that will certainly develop the right understanding in the child. So you can see, what do you say? This process is okay or this process of do's and don'ts? So that will not help, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, One had to find out. In fact, if you feel that. No, no, no. I am saying, even if I have the thought of stealing somebody's possession, is it naturally acceptable to me? I can, I can say yes, it is. No, no, how can I say? See, then the verification is not taking place. Why will I steal somebody's possession? Because I you might be. Reverse it and verify it. Pardon? If somebody thinks you were things, how do you feel about it? So you reverse Even not that. No, the moment I have. I can find out for myself. <laughs> See? When you're stealing somebody's possession. Natural, there is a society that's right? That's natural. No, 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 I'm not saying that. <laughs> 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 yeah. So in fact we can take everything like this as a proposal and then verify. So even if I have a thought of stealing for some time and I can find out why do I have this feeling? What do I ultimately require? What do I ultimately naturally accept? Is it to just take some possession or to feel prosperous? So it is to feel prosperous. Now, what is the naturally acceptable way of becoming prosperous? I can find it out. To get to know the basic human aspiration, which is happiness and prosperity and its continuity. And we'll explore this also, what happiness is. So what do you think? Can happiness be understood? Or it is something subjective? It can be understood. Can happiness be the same for all? So when we go to explore this, we'll find it out. You know? So essentially, you know, we'll explore into happiness and prosperity in continuity in detail when we talk about harmony. So this is the process. So it's the process of living in harmony within, living in harmony with others, and ultimately living in harmony with the entire existence. So I'll keep on referring to this diagram time and again, because essentially, we have to enable this process in oneself. Now what happiness is? If you try to look into this, so we can find out for oneself, you take any state or situation in which you live, if there is harmony, there is synergy in it, then it is naturally acceptable to me to be in that state or situation. And I want to continue in that state or situation, isn't it? So take any situation, take any state, if there is harmony there. For example, you are working in a department and there is harmony in the department. All people are comfortable with each other and you know, happy working with each other. So you feel comfortable. You want to continue. But the morning, the very moment you come in the morning and see each other's faces and you feel you know, <laughs> doomed. <laughs> then you don't want to continue in that state. So you take any level of living, any dimension of your life. You can see that when there is harmony, I want to continue. If there is lack of harmony, I don't want to continue. Within me also, you can see that sometimes you now when we have you know, the working days, then we are aspiring for holiday. And you see, like the holidays are coming. So when the holidays are not there, we are aspiring for holidays. When the holidays are there, and let's say you have to be with yourself for the whole day. No television, no newspaper, no magazine, no other person. You have to be with yourself for the whole day. Are you comfortable? That means I do not have harmony within. That's how I have to look for outside to be comfortable. 
So, we have been waiting for the holidays and so far they have really turned the whole thing and made a scenario in the working day. <laughs> so that rest of the days are happier. <laughs> So basically, when you say happiness, you want to be in harmony. When I ask you, do you want to be happy, ultimately you want to be in harmony at every level of your living. So we can define happiness by saying that happiness to be in harmony, to be in a state of harmony or synergy is happiness. Is that true? Now if you look at this definition of happiness, can we say that the happiness is the same for all? Everybody basically aspires to be in harmony. Whatever we are doing, Correct. essentially we want to be in a state of harmony by doing that particular thing. On the other hand, if there is unhappiness, there is disharmony, contradiction. So any state of situation in which I live, if there is disharmony or contradiction, then it is not acceptable to me naturally to be in that state of situation and I want to come out of that situation. So to be forced to be in a state of disharmony or contradiction is unhappiness. So unhappiness is to be in disharmony. Now try to relate to every situation. You know? So for example, you go home and you ring the bell, a person sitting at home is not able to open the door for five minutes. What happens? Pardon? It's meant to be that way on that day. Okay. <laughs> That you can do only when you are in harmony. Otherwise, you multiply the problems. So, for example, the person did not come to open the door on time, and you, and the moment he or she open, he starts shouting. And a simple thing, you are not open to, able to open the door at time. And maybe the other person was in the restroom, right? And the other person also gets irritated. Am I here only to open the door? Right? For you? She would say, I'm cooking for you all in the kitchen. <laughs> and then the whole lot of you know, things start. And then the disharmony in the family. So if you look at that, ultimately, you know, what we are aspiring for is harmony. Sir, we, we do have, in order to keep ourselves happy, humor clubs. I hope all of us uh, agree with me. In uh, cities also, in uh, various places uh, where they go, or on our program like that, uh, are two of us, uh, they go uh, keep, to keep them happy. So that, and also, uh, I, 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 I want to say this, the surgeons, doctors, maybe some of them may be here, uh, you say they have a laughing therapy, so they, they go to a place. I also see even not doctors, a lot of uh, CEOs and other uh, a lot of uh, high-profile people uh, where they want to relieve uh, the stress or whatever they say. They go and then do some laughing uh, therapy. I, I think still it is continuing on. So the happiness also comes through these type of exercises. So, so when I'm not happy in continuity, then I have to go for such therapies. <laughs> These are recharging stations. It's not, it's not possible. Happiness is equal to recharge. No, no, you, what you should do is just yes, go for the harmony session. Keep a class on time. But if you come to this class, we'll be happy forever. <laughs> <laughs> because long-lasting happiness is going to be more so we can see that. What is confirmed? You see that? I got some call. I got to make it. 
So you can see that essentially I want to be in a harmony, state of harmony, isn't it? That is my happiness at every level of my living. If that is not the case, then I am unhappy. If there is contradiction, I am forced to be in that state of contradiction, then that is unhappiness for me. I can also note that happiness and excitement are not the same. They are two different things. Presently, for the sake of happiness, we are going for excitement. So maybe you are watching a cricket match and you favor one party, one team. Okay? And that team wins. You feel excited. That team loses. You feel depressed. Now, whatever is happening in this process is excitement. It is not happiness. The, you just observe. You know, the batsman is batting and you are favoring that team. He hits a six. Uh, you are full of excitement. Yes, now we are going to win. The next ball, he gets bold. Excel is getting, like, getting drunk. <laughs> Excel is like getting drunk. So many times, we try to associate happiness to these incidences, which can never ensure continuity of happiness. So you'll see that primarily, we are looking for happiness outside most of the time, and we are looking for two distinct sources. One source is the behavior or the feeling of the other. Let the other shower happiness on me. Let the other pay attention to me, appreciate me. Anna, isn't it? Let the other pay attention to me. Things like that. And we are trying to relate to happiness Anna, in this manner. This is one major issue in our life. When we are depending on the feeling of the other for one's own happiness. The second source that we are trying to relate to is some sensation from the body. By eating something, listening something, Anna, touching something, and seeing something, smelling something. And all these can only ensure happiness momentarily. These are all sources of excitement, not happiness. If I'm able to see this, then I will make the right program for happiness. Then I can see that the source of happiness has to be inside. It cannot be outside. If the source of happiness is outside, it cannot be continuous. It has to be only momentary. That essentially means to have to understand harmony. Then only the source of happiness can be inside, otherwise it is going to be outside. Similarly, we can understand what prosperity is. So the prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than the required physical facility. That feeling of more. That I have more than what I require. Now there are two elements associated with this. One is the identification of the right requirement of physical facility. How much I require? Yes. Ten minutes. I don't know. Pardon? Okay, <laughs> 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 break time. <laughs> so before the tea break, we are discussing about the feeling of happiness and prosperity. So we talked about the feeling of happiness. We saw that happiness is to be in a state of harmony. You could also see that happiness and excitement are two different things, isn't it? Now with that, we can further explore prosperity. So the issue is when do I feel prosperous? So when I'm able to see that I have more than what I require, I feel prosperous. If I feel that I have less than what I require, I feel deprived, isn't it? So prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility. So there are two essential components of that. One is the requirement of physical facility, which has to be made out correctly. What is my need for physical facility? Can I, can I make out that requirement? So as we go along, we'll see how we can make out the need for physical facility. And do I have more than that or not? So for example, I require food. So let's say in a year I consume this much. Do I have more than that or not? If I have, then I feel prosperous in terms of food. I require a house. Do I have more than what I require? So if I have the house, well and good. I require clothes. In a similar manner, I can make out the need for all kinds of physical facilities that I require, and then I can see whether I have more than required or not. Isn't it? If in any case I feel that, no, it is left, then I feel deprived. And you can also see that prosperity and possession of wealth are two different things. I may be possessing a lot of wealth, but I may not feel prosperous. That can be the case. So let's say I have a salary of 60,000 rupees per month, 
and I feel that my need is for 40,000 per month. I feel prosperous. But if I feel that my need is for 1 lakh per month and I am getting 60,000, I do not feel prosperous to put in terms of money, isn't it? So the same income may or may not ensure the feeling of prosperity in me. So to feel prosperous, you know, these two things are important. What I require, am I able to make it out correctly and what I have. So many times we bother about what I have and then we try to add to it without being clear how much I require. Is that true? So it may be the case that today I am earning 60,000 and I feel that I require 1 lakh. Tomorrow with some increment and promotion I am getting 1 lakh 20,000. But now I feel that I require 2 lakhs. I still do not feel prosperous. So both are essential. Hannah? That's how you can see. Excuse me. That, yeah. It may be true for income earning people, but if it's a production systems, producing more than the required is prosperity means that you produce more and more than what is required, then you push it in the market so supply becomes more and more. So you're prospering. Yeah, so that the, more the, the is problem essentially is producing more is a question, right? Yeah. So earning more, I agree with you, that's you know, or having more, it's okay. But producing more means if you use that term, then you go back and address the issue in the movie, the movie what we have seen just now, that you produce more and more so that you can No, I'm not saying more and more, I'm saying more than required. So it so happened that I may not Actually, be able to... we are producing more, more no, than no, no, required no. right now, right? I'm because that's why the supply is becoming more and more, the, the toxic is becoming more and more, everything becomes higher. I'm coming to that. See, so for example, I have to produce rice. It may be the case that I am not able to produce rice thrice a year, isn't it? So I produce for one season and then maybe in another season I am not able to produce or I am able to produce this year and the next year produce goes down. So when I am not able to produce then that should suffice, this is one part and second part is to be able to share. So let's say I am having four members in a family and if some gift comes to my house I should have enough to feed the other, isn't it? So for that, we require more than what is required. Yeah? So that more is for sharing, for preserving when the production is not taking place, not for accumulation, not for consumption or indulgence. Isn't it? Yeah. In fact, there is a common proverb that goes in Chhattisgarh. There is one state called Chhattisgarh in Hindi. You know? There is a common proverb that goes, ki, what do the people in the village think when a guest comes to the house, they think that let them eat and then go. Khaen to jayen. What do the people in cities believe? Let them go so that we can eat. <laughs> so who is more prosperous? <laughs> we generally wait for the guest to leave so that we can eat. You know? Even though we have too much, but still we feel that we have less. We cannot feed the gifts also. If that is the case, then we are not feeling prosperous. No. Let me let me respond to that. Yeah. So the requirement is for communication. Now for communication we need devices. Okay. We may or may not need devices. And that device can have multiple levels of sophistication. So essentially you want to communicate. So let me say that before this pandemic took place, I was not even aware of what Zoom is. Most of us. <laughs> and now we are utilizing the Zoom to communicate. So, we want to communicate, not to be able to communicate. For example, if I am here, you know, in front of you, I don't need that Zoom platform to communicate. But we do, or we may require Zoom platform to communicate to somebody sitting abroad or in some distant place. So that is only one mode of communication. Similarly with you know, smartphones, with telephones, with mobiles, with pagers. All these are various modes, various instruments of communication. 
So basically our requirement is for communication. Now to fulfill that requirement we can have multiple kinds of physical facilities. That we can invent and at the same time we can make out how much is required. To what extent sophistication is required. That we can make out. For example I need a phone to communicate to the other. I can make out the level of sophistication and technology that is required. <coughs> Isn't it? We can properly utilize it also. I also have to see that to invent or to produce or to and uh, utilize it rightly what resources are available in the nature so that I do not deplete the nature. So with that I can make out my requirement, I can also make out the way to fulfill my requirement. In fact we see that we are inventing so many kinds of physical facilities, right? But it may be the case that our basic requirement is not being met. For example, health is a requirement. So one outcome of having enough physical facilities that we have good health. Now it may be the case that we are producing so many things and ultimately suffering on account of health. It is being said that now many people are dying out of obesity. Earlier people are dying of hunger, now people are dying of obesity. This has become a common scenario in the cities. In England it is said that by the age of 13, 80% children are obese. And that has become a common problem because for you know, heart trouble and you know, uh, liver and all those things. So we have to see that prosperity and position of wealth are two different things. So if I am prosperous, I think of right utilization, I think of nurturing the other. When I feel deprived, I think of accumulation, I think of exploiting the other. So whether I feel prosperous or not is marked by this. If I think of nurturing the other, I feel prosperous. That is a mark of my prosperity. But when I am thinking of exploiting others, I feel deprived. Isn't it? So I may have lots of accumulation of wealth with me, but I am all the time thinking of multiplying the wealth for, by exploiting others. It means I am not feeling prosperous within. If I pro feel prosperous within, I will think of making everybody else prosperous. Is that true? We were having one tea break session when we were conducting a workshop at Kanpur and that was being conducted for the students of Kanpur University. So during the tea break, we simply asked the students with how much tea will this cup get filled? Then looking at the size of the cup, one student responded, 350 ml is enough. We said very well, Anna. We are able to make out so easily that in 350 ml, this cup will get filled. Now how about this cup not having a bottom? If this cup doesn't have a bottom, with how much tea will it get filled? <laughs> then the students started laughing. And how can there be a cup without the bottom? We say that, see, it is such a simple thing to understand. In a similar way, if I am not aware of my need for physical facility, my requirement of physical facility, I am just like a bottomless cup. How will I get fulfilled? I may be filling a lot of facility there, but it is never going to be fulfilled because the requirement is not clear. So to be able to make out the requirement is a basic you know, thing as a human being. Unless I am able to make out the requirement, how can I ever get fulfilled? So, Actually, you, in the exploitation process, there's a person to exploit and you're exploitable. You're gullible for exploitation, right? So if you do the understanding of the required physical facility clearly in your mind, nobody can exploit you. So if everybody comes to the state, nobody can be exploitable. Yeah. So, so in that case, you fix the problem automatically. Yeah, so on either side we have to work. The person who is exploiting and the person who is being exploited, both have to understand so that both feel prosperous. Yeah, so that's the problem. That's the problem. You fix that problem, the thing will get fixed. Yeah, and that has to be fixed by you for you. Yes, correct. That's true. Okay. If I fix for you, you will feel subjugated. You feel dominated. That is the problem. When I make a rule for the state by fixing others' needs, it becomes a domination. If I able to find out your needs by yourself, you feel resolved. For example, we were taking tea. Anna? We can make out how much tea I require in a day, how much food I require in a day, how many clothes I require in a day. 
isn't it? Now what the basic problem is, we'll try to make out in the next part of the session. So if I'm thinking of nurturing the other, I feel prosperous. Otherwise, if I'm feeling like exploiting the other, then somewhere I'm feeling deprived. That's how I'm trying to exploit the other. And this may you know, percolate in every interaction. I may try to exploit the rickshaw wala, I may try to exploit the auto wala, the sabji wala, and so on. <laughs> if I feel prosperous, I'll try to nurture the other. If I feel deprived, I'll try to exploit the other. Actually, the exploitation, you are right in a very ideal situation that if you know you are required physical quantity, you will only consume that much or you will stop it after that, you won't buy it. But the question right now is that is why you have got this WTO organizations and everything to avoid anti-dumping so that you sell lower uh, to, the, uh, to the exported country and then spoil them. That's what the rules are for. So the government also has to play some role in it in order to become a stability to that, to the environment. Because you cannot convert the whole population by having this course this kind of a thing to really know just to See, consume whatever is required. Because it has, to work, it has to have work both hand in hand so that it can make it successful faster. Eventually so first it can of happen. all, I have to be clear at a personal level. When I work for individual transformation, then only I can be clear about the societal transformation. So I have to be clear about myself. Can I make out my need for physical facilities rightly or not? Once I am able to make, then only the same can go in the state, in the society. So we can see that the basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity. Happiness is to be in a state of harmony and prosperity you have this feeling. It is a feeling. It is not possession. It is a feeling of having more than required physical facility. And there could be some prevailing notions of happiness and prosperity. For example, one may assume that accumulation of wealth is prosperity. The richer you are, the more prosperous you are. That is, the more you have accumulated, the more prosperous you are. These are all false notions. That is not true. Essentially, do not aspire for possession or wealth. We aspire for prosperity, isn't it? Similarly, some prevailing notions could be there for happiness. For example, by owning or accumulating more and more physical facility, or by getting pleasure from favorable sensations, or by getting attention, appreciation of others from others. <coughs> so, there is dependent on physical facility here, it can't be continuous. There is again dependent on sensation here, it can't be continuous. They is dependent on the other here, it can't be continuous. These are very basic fallacies. Basic you know, uh, lack of understanding in our life. All the time, you will see that we are working here or there. So many industries you know, are focusing on this part only. To catch the attention of the other through your looks, through your clothes, through your gadgets. You know, and ultimately, whatever we derive from there will not be continuous. Or to get favorable sensation. So sometimes happiness, that is excitement, sometimes unhappiness, that is depression. And whenever you feel depressed, you try to escape from there. So this is also you know, not acceptable naturally. If the attention and appreciation does not bring happiness to the other person or to you, then why do you want to be courteous and all those things? To the, share thing, my the, thing, the thing, the human behavior itself will change, right? Because you, you don't care whether I appreciate or not, because you, are, you want to have everything from inside. And I don't have happiness by appreciating you, so why, why even have a, have a, a congenial relationship or a, 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 a cordial relationship? So there no, could the, be the question is, you have to say, I don't think it's 100% right, that's what I'm thinking. So there could be two modes of communication. One is to get happiness from the other. And the second could be to share my happiness with the other. So I can still be courteous, I can still interact with the other, to share my happiness with the other. This is acceptable to me naturally. But when I try to get happiness from you through some expression, I am dependent on you. If you give, I feel excited. If you don't give, I feel depressed. And then I am enslaved. I am enslaved by the other. Isn't it? Nice. So with this, we can look at the key takeaways. So essentially, <laughs> 
with the process self exploration that helps us to refer to the natural acceptance our basic aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity happiness is to be in a state of harmony and unhappiness is to be forced in a state of contradiction we can also see that happiness and excitement are not the same they are two different things and getting some feeling from obtaining physical facility sensation some feeling from others this tends to be conditional and temporary and there is dependence outside so it cannot can never be the source of continuous happiness so similarly prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility and accumulation of prosperity are two different things so when we are having the full workshop for you know 8 days 7 days then we can discuss much more at length with some more examples 